Hello and welcome back to Discussing Art with JL. This is our first episode for 2023, and I am so, so excited to be back with you discussing art, discussing technology, and talking about what's going on in emerging technologies like blockchain, Web3, AI, all the different uh, blockchains like Solana and Ethereum and Flow and Polygon and Optimism. And there's so many great topics to explore that relate to art and to technology. And so this is the perfect way to start off our Discussing Art series for 2023. And that is Discussing Art with Exchange.Art. So in that way, we have Keegan, also known as Goku in NFT, here with us from Exchange.Art. So welcome. How you doing? Nice to be here, JL. I am great. I'm doing so well. So can you just give us a little bit of background about who you are? What is your title with Exchange.Art? And then we'll start from there. Yeah, amazing. Uh, so I'm Goku NFT, also known as Keegan in the real world. <laughs> uh I joined Exchange Art uh, through being an artist first foremost. Um, I, I'm a photographer who started building communities uh, over on the Ethereum side of things uh, just just around two years ago, actually. And um, through kind of experiencing the ecosystem in Solana and uh, in turn meeting some of the people who ended up being the founders of Exchange Art, uh, we just kind of meshed, right? And our ethos is really aligned. We we both really care about the arts. And I was like, you know what? It's time to test out this ecosystem for my own art. And I came over, have been releasing my own art for a while. And then, you know, obviously just kind of continuing to build that relationship with the exchange art team. Um, and, you know, around mid last year, they asked me if I wanted to join their team part time. And I was, you know, super blown away and uh, by that opportunity. So I, I've been here as their community manager, and then now community lead. That is amazing. Community manager and community lead, Goku, NFT, on exchange.art. Welcome to Discussing Art. Well, that is a great intro. Thank you so much, Goku NFT, for joining us and being here to talk about exchange.art. Well, let's dig in. Now that we know who you are, you know what we're all doing here, and we're all listening uh, across so many great platforms, including, I have heard, we've started to get picked up by a blockchain platform with our podcast. So thank you so much to all the amazing people who listen to us every single week and every single year, because we love to do really evergreen stories where we can talk about amazing topics and then come back together year after year and talk about them over and over. So with that being said, Goku NFT, you are here with us on exchange.art. What is exchange.art? What is the inspiration for the platform and the ethos behind it? Yeah, that's a great question. So exchange.art is the leading fine art marketplace on Solana. It, yes, fine art exists on Solana and it is alive and doing great. Uh, the, the whole reason that exchange art was born is because that was a little bit lacking on Solana, right? There, there was a lot of art, but it was very fragmented all over the place. Um, and what makes a market is having concentrated liquidity. Um, so we wanted to be that place where we can have concentrated liquidity for artists. And then also, uh, you know, be a place where we can use our IRL skills. Um, a lot of our team comes from the art world. Uh, to then provide opportunities back to artists who may have never had it before. After all, the, the blockchain is just uh, kind of a stepping stone towards having art be a little bit more appreciated by everyone, right? It's, it, I think that it's providing these artists with these opportunities to succeed is, is kind of what drives us as a platform. Yeah, I can totally see that. And that actually... Um... That led me to another question. What categories of um, different, not just art, but what categories in general on exchange.art are really popular? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, it's really great to see these resurgences of, of different styles and, you know, like trends kind of pop up and, and uh, you know, it kind of flows through those motions. But what happens in those trends is a lot of education. Um, so something we saw happen is there was a huge trend on abstract art last year. Um, abstract art absolutely blew up 
And then what happened from there is uh, not only did the artists who were making this beautiful work, and by the way, they've been making this beautiful work since before Solana even existed, you know, most of them, uh, but then they became educators. They started educating collectors onto why their art matters. Then guess what happened? The collectors start educating. The collectors mm -hmm. start educating one another. And then all of a sudden, abstract art matters. And we saw this huge wave. We saw artists go from uh, relatively small sales to uh, consecutively over 100 of Solana sales. Um, another thing that really excites me is photography. Um, you know, I have a soft spot because I am a photographer myself. And I came over with a mission to amplify photography. But within the last three months, we've seen a, a whole new wave of ETH photographers coming over and not only coming over alone, but bringing a community with them, right? Bringing collectors with them, uh, showcasing that their art is their art no matter where it is. And the same thing we've seen now that education cycle continue and more people are educating about why photography is more than just someone taking a picture, right? Uh, which is really amazing to see. And then another thing that uh, is really popular, the third one, uh, I would say is illustration. And again, illustration is something that the traditional art world didn't really respect, right? Uh, go make your comic books, go, you know, go make your graphic novels. That, that's not art. Uh, we're flipping that on its head these days, right? We have seen artists, uh, of course, most people, um, even outside of the Solana ecosystem know of John Lay. John Lay has kind of flipped the script on illustration and turned it completely into fine art. People, you know, really desire his pieces and in the past, not so much, right? Like the, this is the kind of the power of the blockchain and, and what, again, fires us up. Yeah, that that's incredible. And when you were talking about the different trends that emerge, you know, I always talk in this show about minimal viable communities. Like what is the smallest number of people that you have to get involved with your art or your movement or the thing that you find really passionate about to get people fired up and actually make a difference? And when you were talking about that, I, it felt like there's something really being tapped into with minimal viable communities within the Solana ecosystem. There's a, like single types of arts, like, you know, abstract or, or other. Can you speak to that? Does that resonate? Yeah, a little bit. Right. So um, I, I think it's a little bit of that and a little bit of inflection points, right? Mm -hmm. Like it hits a point where, um, you know, those five people, those 10 people who were really loud about it, um, all of a sudden one joins, he's really respected. Right. It's a collector who maybe has had a little bit more experience collecting, maybe has looked apart a, a certain way. And then all of a sudden that inflection point tips a little bit. And, you know, I, I don't think that those collectors purposely do that. It's just mm -hmm. something that you can observe happening on the trend line. Right. Yeah. And I think it, I think you're totally right, though, that like uh, once you kind of cross that certain like that little bump, then it's like, OK, there, there's something happening there, you know, even with. Uh, the photography community, for instance, before it blew up, there was a huge group of people who, again, none of us were making massive sales or anything, but there was tons of us being loud, supporting one another. And then all of a sudden, I, I, you know, I think that we were that that minimal viable community for those new ETH photographers. They're like, oh, wait, look over there. You know, look over there. There's all these people who are releasing. Now I, I feel comfortable coming over myself with my art. And then an inflection point starts and and you know, the, the snowball tumbles, if you would. That's incredible. Well, speaking to that too, what about your personal um, journey? What um, really brought you into Solana? Was it a certain artist or a certain project that you loved? You know, what was it for you? You know, it, it's funny is uh, what got me into Solana originally was being early. I was coming off of uh, touring uh, with musicians. That was my, my main gig. I was the stage manager uh, pandemic hit, took that away. I was like, what do I do with all this energy I have? Oh no. Uh, and you know, I, I, again, I didn't have a lot of extra liquidity working in music. You kind of do your passion, but you don't get to get super wealthy. Uh, so I threw a couple hundred bucks and some coins and one of them happened to be Solana very early on. So I, I got that, I held on to it. And then I started learning about the NFT ecosystem, right? So I started participating in the NFT ecosystem right after monkey business minted out um i actually i minted a project called fract which was uh like the first generative whatever project uh it was very interesting and one of my friends missed it so i ended up trading him a fract for a monkey which i missed uh but that's how early it was right you look at the value of these two next to each other one's like 300 soul and one's like now like 
three. Uh, so it's it's kind of funny to see, uh, but that's just how early it was, right? So I started dabbling around meeting these people in the ecosystem. I'd already been on ETH, so like I already understood how to navigate. I was already completely in love with the blockchain and all of this, all of these communities and microcosms that existed. Um, so through the Monkey DAO, probably is where I ended up meeting A2K DeFi, who is one of the co-founders of Exchange. Um, for those of you who don't know, Exchange has several co-founders, which I think is really quite awesome. It makes it a very equitable company and everyone really you know, cares to, to give their all. Uh, but I met A2K, we started a friendship and he started kind of like pestering me a little bit, like playfully, right? Like, hey, like, come on. And this is uh, probably the first month that Exchange was released or, or second month. Um, Exchange released in October and this was December. So it was a couple months after Exchange came out and you know just through meeting him being like I, I kind of I trust this guy you know I had never interacted with a platform on ETH I was there for a year I had never talked to the founders of of any art platform OpenSea, Rarible, any of these like I, I, I didn't have that kind of open communication like I, I was actively at this point making changes to exchange art without working there right I was like hey I don't like this and he would take it back to the team change it uh, so through that, that relationship formed and again, just, we, we kind of had a great synergy for, for quite a while. Uh, I started, ended up working with them like mid last year, uh, officially from an official capacity and it's just been great. You know, it feels like an extended family. That's amazing. Yeah. It sounds like, um, the community is really strong and like you, you built up, I love that thought. Um, and I did not know that about exchange.art having multiple founders, which does, it gives more ideas. It gives a, you know, a more community, you know, owned feel to it. And that's one thing, you know, that I really value about web three in general and the web three ethos is keeping it about the people and keeping it about the creators and, you know, keeping it not centered around one single power. Um, and that's one thing that, you know, that happens over and over again in our ecosystem too, is things change yeah. and they keep on moving. Well, that's great. And um, so, Speaking to that, so that were those some of your um, your experiences from 2022? Are there uh, any other big experiences from 2022 that you'd love to highlight that just stand out in your mind or were interesting or, you know, on the up or downside? <laughs> well, 2022 was an interesting year for, for uh, specifically Solana, right? For everyone in blockchain participation, but for, for Solana especially, it was a very interesting year. Uh, but in that interesting year, something kind of hit inside of me. And th this is something I, I walked away from 2022 with. Um, is I, I was able to go to Breakpoint with Exchange Art this last year. And something that, uh, again, is on, on that like highlights of last year was that we were able to do so many IRL events, right? We're trying to bridge that traditional art world with the digital art world just a little bit more and more every month, every week, whatever, you know, as we continue growing here. Uh, but at, at Breakpoint, I really got like a, a glimpse of just how awesome this ecosystem is, right? There's builders making games. There's, there's complete like dev teams who are focused on only certain areas of DeFi, only certain areas of, of NFT, you know, in our case, only art. And there's this, this really rich and vibrant ecosystem. And I don't think that I would have had the same feelings leaving 2022 without without seeing that firsthand and experiencing that full firsthand, it's like, you know, th this ecosystem is very active and, and I'm someone who goes to these kind of trade shows all the time, like been to plenty of ETH conferences, been to plenty of other blockchain conferences, but there was something very special about that. And I think that the, the way that the community has come together and coalesced this, this year through, you know, down times and harder times has been something that has had me really inspired to just keep, building on Solana. And from exchange point of view, it has us just doubled down to be immersed into the community, right? It's like, we want to build, we, we say this all the time, we build in the open, right? It's we want to build with the people who use our products. Uh, we want to build with the artists who need the tooling. Uh, and that's after all is our goal is to create this tooling that can in turn change artists life. You know, it's like this, this was the first year of exchange art and already we've been able to change creators lives from across the world. So where will we be at the end of, of 23 and beyond is, you know, kind of where our brains are all 
angle that right now. Yeah, well, that's a perfect segue into my next question because we are in currently January 2023 when we are taping this. The question now is, what do you see on the horizon for art and for digital exchange and for all these great topics, including, you know, in the salon ecosystem going forward for 2023? You know, it's funny. Uh, two years ago, when we talked about any of this, people were like, you guys are crazy. Right? Definitely. Di digital ownership. Digital no. ownership. What, what do you mean? So uh, look at this. Two years later, and people are already accepting major brands. All of these things are leading indicators that like the normal person, the average person is going to start not even realizing it, but they're going to be thinking about digital ownership, right? It's They're going to be thinking about where do I own it? But uh, everyone has something digital, right? Whether it be a phone or they play video games, they have assets that they want to own and they just don't realize it yet. So I think we're starting to see these ideas shift globally. Uh, and people want to secure their assets. They want to actually own things and they want to validate that it's theirs. And I think that this year and, and through the bear, we're seeing, we, we learned all these lessons from when it was uptime craziness. And now we get to kind of implement some of those, right? We get to think about how are we onboarding the next million people, right? What does that look like? Now we know some of the security issues that existed before. Now we know some of the way that people were utilizing uh, you know, social engineering. Now we know we X, Y, and Z, right? And, and we can take those lessons learned to improve that. And I honestly see us going towards a realm where people don't fully realize that they're even using a blockchain, right? It's, it's where I don't think that's going to happen in 23, but I think we start on that path, right? Uh, and that happens through networks like Solana that are lightning fast, right? It's like, you don't want, if you feel like you didn't even transact, then that's the future, right? It's like, if it was so quick that you didn't even realize you spent a hundred bucks on your shoes, <laughs> like boom, you know, like it, it's that easy. And I think that once, once uh, civilization kind of has that realization more and more, especially globally, right? We, we, we talk about globally a lot and it's something that I get excited about, especially with Solana, you look at the hacker houses uh, schedule this year, it's so global and it's in cities that they weren't at last year. So there's a huge, huge focus on growing globally. And I think that that's really kind of a beautiful thing. I definitely agree. Well, 2023 is looking really, really amazing then. And you know, when you were talking about how early we were, you know, too, in the last few years too, in 2019, I also was tour managing. So I was like in that same world, you know? Um, and so, yeah, like 2019, I tour managed for the Palmer squares. We went and did South by Southwest. And then, you know, in 2020 just completely shut down. And like, even if you wanted to be booking, if you wanted to be in that industry, it was a rough time. And, you know, being the type I, you know, I can't speak for you, but I, I would guess that you probably were like me where you always had a few other little pockets of things you're working on in the background. Yeah. There's always separate side hustles just, you know, not just to stream things together just to survive, but also because passion, you know, and like, you know, passion yes. for creativity. And isn't it in interesting, you know, a few years later that people like us that were in creative fields are now, you know, you're leading, you know, a creative, you know, community team, you know, at a major exchange on a blockchain art, you know, and um, I do a whole lot of different things, but, you know, I host this podcast, but I also am a builder myself and I am the founder of NFT ATL and I founded a nonprofit last year for helping getting um, kids into emerging technologies. So the, the thing that I'm always thinking about, and this is a, one question before we show the exchange I want to ask you about, have you thought about all the skills that you built up before you got into blockchain and is it, is it, are you, I know you're bringing some of the skills into it, but have you been thinking at all about taking the skills you've you know, gathered here in the blockchain world and trying to pull them back into where your other passions were at, like back into music and touring. Are those ideas floating around or like, what's your thought on that? Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that's really interesting. And I feel like almost the creative part of myself has taken over the, the other side. Uh, and not that I can't go and do all this production still. And I, I still obviously love it. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's just so funny how that that happened, right? Things that were my passion before are now my job, and and now my old job is kind of now my passion. Uh, you know, I, I still do things, and I still I, I think that there's a huge crossover, right? Like NFTs, crypto, whatever. 
uh, I kind of got introduced to this world through live production in the first place, really. Like I started, I live in New York, so there was a lot of blockchain conferences that would come through. They'd all want some like weird rave afterwards. So the production companies would all, you know, we'd go and we'd, we'd have a huge budget for some tiny little party and, and have a lot of fun. Um, and I, I think that that is like these events and these experiential events, especially is something that I could definitely see myself going towards. Uh, but again, more towards the art side and less like, I don't want to be like lab miking people up anymore, unfortunately. Uh, although I do love corporate event money and it is great. Uh, but I, I would much rather like use those skills from before and these skills that I have now to, to kind of go more on the experiential side of things. Like, uh, whether it be an event that's focused around art, like we've done at Exchange, whether it be an art installation that you build itself, which I've helped a few times with. Um, we had a huge event here in, in New York called NFTC, which was really amazing. Uh, it was around NFT NYC last year. And we took over the Seaport District of, of New York, uh, which was absolutely incredible. We took over the IPIC movie theater down there and uh, each theater was a different activation. So like, again, I'm, I'm using a little bit of both worlds. Uh, and, you know, nowadays I'm not the one that's doing the AV team. Now I can be the director of AV. You know, now I can, I can help uh, kind of bridge both worlds because again, that world doesn't know how to talk to this world and vice versa, right? It's like, you know, blockchain weirdos like us like i mean you and i do because we yeah. come from the av world but like normally it's just like it's a whole other planet right so yeah. uh for me translating both of those is really exciting um and, and like i said it's it, for me it's a blessing that i'm able to do my what was my passion before now is something more full-time and like have some freedom to then you know, maybe come up with some of these ideas myself. Like maybe, maybe someday I'll have a physical art installation of my own that I can use production equipment, you know, like some kind of sound bath, some kind of laser show, whatever it might be. Like, I don't know yet. Right. But I, I think that that's ultimately uh, once I get the, the, you know, financial freedom to play with some of those tools, I think that would be incredible. Yeah. It sounds like you have a lot of great tools in your tool belt too, as an artist and um, as a multidisciplinary person having different thoughts. That's something that I think it's very important, you know, in, in my art creation is bringing in different elements from different parts of my life and stuff, you know, to bring in pieces. And I also love um, multimedia related art. You know, I, why does it have to just be an image? There could be some music, yeah. there could be some movement, there could be just the image version though, but can, and that can be very important in its own storytelling. But yeah, I love all of those different things. Well, you know, speaking to that, you know, I know we have a lot of budding artists that listen to the podcast. I know we have a lot of people that are interested in the Solana ecosystem. So I'm going to pull up our slide deck here and show the um the exchange.art website and then so will you lead it for us um and tell us um what it is that you know we see in these and lead us through the steps that an artist would do to create a piece of art on exchange.art just let me know when to press the button and then um just describe it too for our, our podcast audience as well absolutely yeah this is something that we really take pride in and something that we're constantly improving on is is our minting flow and this is also kind of our onboarding flow as well uh something really amazing about exchange art is we're an open platform uh we do not require an invite or anything uh what we do require is about four to six hours to review your artwork to make sure it's not stolen and to make sure that it aligns with actually being art you know like we're, we're, we're we don't have generative pfps on our on our platform because we don't want that volume to interfere uh, we want it to be only for the artists. So what you'll do is you'll just simply head over to exchange.art. Love the, the tag. Super easy. You know what you're going to do on this website, right? You're going to exchange art. Uh, so you go up and you're going to click the little circle at the top and connect your wallet. First of all, it's going to say create. Uh, up at the top there, you'll click create and you'll sign in at, and create your account profile for the first time. From there, you'll see kind of a menu that we have up on the screen now, which will show you uh, the homepage. We have different spotlights that go through. And then if you click your little icon after you create your profile, you'll have a drop down menu pop up. Uh, and what you'll want to do first is create your series. You can actually do that from inside the mint itself if you'd like, but some artists like to make the series first and then add the pieces later. 
uh, completely up to the way that you prefer to work. So you either start with creating a series or creating an art piece. Uh, inside of that, the art pieces must live in a series. So just you'll either set that up from when you meant or prior. Uh, super simple. You can go ahead and go to the next page there. So once you click that button to create your piece, you'll be asked if you want to create an addition or a one of one. This is super simple. Again, we're trying to make this as easy as possible for creators to flow through. Uh, after all, the hard part you've already done, right? You've created this beautiful piece of work. So now the minting part should be easy. You can go on to the next page. For this example, I clicked one of one. Um, and from there, uh, right now you see that there is an, a photo of mine currently there. Um, I have not selected my series yet. What I would do first is select my series, or you can be prompted to create your series right from this page. Uh, that image where my photo is will be just a thing where you can either drag a photo to a photo, video, uh, MP4, MP3, whatever the case may be. You just you can drag it there or click it. It'll open your file explorer, choose your file, and then go to the next page. That's awesome. Once we're at the next page here, again, super clean. We like to have all the information on one page. Don't have to click around. Don't lose any parameters of, of your artwork. Simply put the title, the description. You can then set your royalties. Uh, and by the way, when you set up your series, you can also set up series-wide royalties. That way, you don't even have to adjust it. Put the whole series at 10%. Anything you mint into that, that collection will automatically be set at 10%. Um, and then from there, you can select any additional attributes that you'd like to put on, um, you know, for, for my photography, I don't really do too many attributes. I'd like to keep it simple. Some people love to put their settings. Um, some people love to put, you know, diff different, different aspects of their artwork that they want to come across in, uh, in the metadata is what you would put there essentially. And then from there, you can select whether you want this piece to be mutable or immutable which is something really interesting about Solana NFTs uh, is by nature, they are mutable, which means they can be changed. Um, but here you can choose whether you want that or don't want that off the rip. Uh, this is a newer update that we've done uh, before. It was quite difficult. You had to have some developer knowledge to go in and do this. So now we've made it really easy. And then if you were to view that NFT uh, the collector can easily see the state of if it's changeable by the artist or not changeable by the artist. Again, we want that information to be really clear. So once all these fields are set and you're happy with everything, just go ahead and click mint. And it's that easy. You'll be popped up to sign a transaction with whatever Solana wallet you choose to use. And uh, there, again, there is a quick uh, between, again, I, I like to say between four and six hour uh, review process. And that's again, to make sure a, first and foremost, that we don't have stolen work coming onto our platform, and B, so that we don't have work that is not handmade art, right? We don't want, um, we don't want someone just generating and spitting out 5,000, 10,000 different of the same thing. Uh, and also that volume would detract from just the pure art. So we, we like to keep it just pure art. Man, y'all do it different over here. Do it a little different. I like that. You know what's cool? Like y'all are like the the hippie rebels over here. <laughs> like y'all are like, no, we don't want some, you know, giant, you know, whether it's a great artist and a great PFP project, that's not the the concern you're talking about. The concern is drowning out the small, amazing artists that are curated to your platform. Yeah, and that's exactly why Exchange was born too. Mm. Um, it, it would never work to be on a larger platform where there's all of these collections that are getting you know tens of thousands of Solana worth of volume. You would never have a discovery layer deep enough to find the artists who are up and coming, even the artists in the top, really. You know, like the, the top selling artist on Solana, I believe has um, done, I wanna say around close to 40,000 Solana total volume traded. Uh, now, when you compare that to, that, that's, you know, that was one hour of, of bonks yesterday, right? Like, you know, a very hyped PFP mint. That was one hour of trading of that. So we really have an ethos where we want to keep those separate. And 
we have nothing but respect and love for, for PFP projects, especially those that uh, do want to help the art community. But we do need to keep them separate in terms of trading volume. So that, that is the thought process there. That is really cool. I feel like y'all are doing some extremely innovative things. And that ethos, I, I see what you're talking about now, you know, that it's not just words on a paper. It is not just an FAQ page. Y'all really mean that you're going to really highlight the artist. And something else I like, because I like to discover music and discover new music. This is the type where I, I could always go back here and always discover new artists. And I'm guessing, you know, since a lot of these artists are just getting discovered, it's, you know, I could be one of their early adopters and be one of the first people to really be like, I love this artist. Um, that's that's cool. one of my favorite things ever. I'm telling you, like, it's, you know, you, you have that moment where you pat yourself on the back. You're like, I do have good taste, you know, like I picked <laughs> up this piece by so-and-so. And then all of a sudden, a few pieces later, this big collector finds it. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, something, uh, the, the price has now increased by a lot. And again, that's not what I'm after at the end of the day with art, but it really does make you feel good to know that like, ah, I, I do have like an eye for it. I do, you know, like, A, you collect art first because you love it, but like we are humans and that, that kind of thing does make us really happy at the end of the day. Like, yes, our pick did succeed. You know, it's like, even when you have a favorite football player, right? It's like, he's doing so good out there. You, you've never met the guy in your life, yeah. but you still are rooting him on. <laughs> yeah we like the orange vest guys um <laughs> but you know yeah because i i grew up in uh, knoxville uh so i knew about the tennessee volunteers and they were they were oh, yes. at one point um so then you know that really is a great ethos in a much different way so give me your your uh your log line pitch why should someone join and become an artist on your platform let's take the blockchain out of it let's take the uh the technology aspects out of it, even though I love those things, but let's just, you know, just talk about a, um, what is your, your, your one line pitch of why an artist at our creative should be on the platform. Yeah. Our ethos drives the platform. Uh, and I, I think that that's really why artists should come check us out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, everything we do is leading back towards providing more opportunities to artists. Uh, something that's really interesting is that we've been able to reach feature parity, uh, and beyond now with marketplaces that have list existed for two plus years longer than we have. So we went really hard in year one, uh, making tools for you, the creator, right? We want to be able to have you be able to mint whatever way you can, additions, auctions, buy nows, uh, right? It, the list goes on, reserve price trigger, um, all of these different developments. Uh, we, we, we now have airdrops in our platform. You can do directly via the site. You can take snapshots, pull your collectors, all of this right in the platform. And again, that's what we want. We want it to be easy for you, the artists. So that's our real pitch to everyone is, is just take everything else out. Like, just like you said, like, we want this to be as easy as possible for you to make a living doing what you love. Dude, super appreciate that. Well, any uh, last announcements and how to get in contact with y'all? Yeah, so something really exciting is happening right now. Um, and you kind of get, again, this gets driven back to the ethos as well. So we're running a contest right now. Uh, less of a contest, more of kind of like a, a fun ongoing raffle, if you would. So we launched our validator just the other day. And uh, I guess it's been about two weeks now. And a validator obviously is amazing. Helps secure the network, helps further decentralization of Solana, that, that's awesome. But the real fun for us is uh, that we're gonna be able to reward the people who decide to stake with us. So coming up first, uh, anyone who has at least 30 Solana staked um, by I believe e end of Epoch 399 is what we're looking at right now for our snapshot date will have a chance of winning a John Lay piece airdrop to them. It is a super limited edition. Uh, I cannot say how many there is yet, but there is not too many. Uh, it is, it's pretty exciting. So basically 70% of that supply will go to anyone that has at least 30 Solana staked in our validator. Um, and then 30% of that supply will go to the very top percent. Obviously we want to reward both, give obviously a lot more opportunity to people who have at just the 30 Solana staked, but reward those who have gone above and beyond as well. 
And the other cool thing about our validator is that we're not trying to profit off of it, right? The goal for when we do start having that validator be profitable is to use that money to fund back into the art community. So this money is going towards more IRL galleries, more experiences that we can provide for artists. None of this is going back towards funding the company itself, but rather activations for the artist and the community itself. That's amazing. And so, yeah, make sure you get in contact with exchange.art. Look at their um, validator. Read for yourself everything. Make sure you do your own research and understand everything that might be involved with that. No financial advice here from any of us. Um, in the last part here, tell us what's the best way to uh, get in touch with you and to get to the exchange. Absolutely. You can catch us pretty much every day of the week on Twitter spaces. We try to really be immersed in the community as much as possible. Uh, you can follow us, uh, our Twitter's down at the bottom here on the scrolling bar, uh, ex exchange art. Uh, and then also you can head over to our Discord. Our Discord is not only a great place to, uh, to communicate with other artists, to get support, but we also just released this thing called Office Hours. You can book a 30-minute consultation with our senior advisor, uh, and she will kind of walk you through whatever you need, right? You can come in, and if you want to improve on certain facets of your art, maybe you're struggling on curating your collection, she's there to give you that advice to kind of help point you on your next way. Um, and it's something that another just amazing opportunity that we're trying to give towards the artist. That is great. Well, thank you so much, Keegan slash Goku NFT for being on Discussing Art with us today. I really appreciate it. We're so excited to learn about Exchange.Art, and I hope that you'll come back one day and will tell us more about what's going on with Exchange.Art. Can't wait to chat again, man. Anytime. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and thank you all so much for watching Discussing Art. I am JL. As you know, we will be back, and we'll be talking about art and technology and everything in between. Thank you so much.